first of all, it's, it's wonderful to be part of the 50th anniversary of the CRM. It's a place that we all know about, and uh, it's, it's wonderful. Uh, the, the theme of my talk today is that you can find math any place. Uh, in how you came and sat down in this room, in how the dust accumulates in the corners, in the easiest thing that we teach, well, six or seven year olds about adding numbers and uh, about shuffling cards. Uh, so I know it may seem a little lowbrow, but for a few minutes I'm going to talk about adding numbers. And you all know what I mean. <laughs> OK, you have to help keep me honest. Uh, here's 5. This is 11, so I write 1 and I carry the 1. Those carries are going to be important. This is 3 and 3, which is 7 with the carry. Uh, this is 0, 1. This is 3, 1. This is 5, 1. This is 4, 1. And this is 6. So when we add numbers in the usual way, carries occur along the way. Yep. And what we're going to talk about for a little while, uh, if you're me and hopefully you after this talk, it's a question, how do the carries go? That is, how many, do you have a carry half the time, a third of the time? If you just had a carry, are you more likely to have a carry the next time? That's what I want to, what I want to talk about. And um, uh, it's useful uh, when you embark on a, project of this sort and to um, be able to write things down and even I have terrible handwriting as I've just proved uh, and uh, it doesn't get much better but um, let me try to write down stuff about about this so we're I'm going to talk about adding here are two numbers you could add three numbers you could add n numbers so we're going to let add n numbers and here I'm working base 10, as we usually do. But as you know, we also work base 2 and base 8 and, and in other bases. And so I'm going to be working with base B, uh, but I'll stick to base 10 as much as I can. Uh, B, B is some number. And, um, and the numbers I'm going to write down, you know, here I wrote them down as numbers, but if I just make them abstract quantities, uh, uh, x0, 1, x, the 0 column, x, uh, 0, 2, x, 0, n, if I add n numbers, and then x1, 1, x2, 1, x, x, 1, 2, <laughs> x, um, x, 1, n, and, and so they go, uh, x, I don't know, k, k 1. Okay, and, and where these x's are chosen at random, if you're following the math, I'm going to pick my digits to be any old numbers, so independent and uniformly distributed. And when you add numbers, at the bottom you have some sums, S0, S1, you know, whatever you get. And at, at the top you have the carries. And uh, so kappa 0, when you, in the last column you never have a carry. Uh, and then there's, I'm going to call the carries kappa 1, kappa 2, etc., kappa k. And, and I'm going to ask how the carries go. So just to try to help you follow along, um, the, if I pick two numbers, how, how do the carries go? Well, let's, let's do it over here just for a second. The numbers can be 0, 1, up to 9. That's my first number. And 0, 1, up to 9. That's my second number. If I add 0 to anything, I never get a carry, of course. So there's no carries if I add 0. If I add 1, there's a carry only if I add it to 9, right? And so there's one carry here and the rest here are zeros. If I add 2, there's a carry if I add it to 9 or if I add it to 8. So there, there'd be carries here and the rest 0. And if I add 9, I always have a carry except if I 
add it to zero. So I'm using this notation uh, to, to try to keep track of, if I pick two numbers at random, uh, what proportion of time do I have a carry? Well, we can easily add up. You know, we, there, are, there are 10 times 10 choices, b squared if, uh, if I was working base b, and how many carries are there? Well, one plus two plus three plus, and at the end, up to nine. And the thing we learn, we, we learn often uh, is how to add up one plus two plus three up to, up to well, n, n minus one, and 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 that's uh, that's, uh, that's the number of carries is uh, n times n minus one over two, and uh, the number of choices. Um, this should be uh, n. It's b. <laughs> it's uh, I'm adding two numbers, so b times b minus 1 over 2. The number of choices is b squared, here 100. And so the chance of a carry is, um, uh, well, b times b minus 1 over 2 times b squared. And that's 1 half minus 1 over 2b. If you let the dust settle, and um, and so when b is 10, it's that's 45 percent. So uh, when you add two numbers at random, uh, when b is 10, 45 percent of the time you get a carry. If you're working base two, uh, it's a quarter of the time you get a carry. A lot more carries base two, and um, and so. Okay, carries make a mess, and uh, we would like to design things to avoid them. And anyway, I'm going to talk about them for a little while. Um, so there's a first observation, because it all sounds, how do you make math out of any of this? Um, uh, there's a first observation, which is the following. I'll write it here. Uh, the carries form a Markov chain. So let me try to explain that. Put your numbers down at random, whatever numbers you like, but random. And then, OK, we know that we start at 0. You never have a carry when you start. And then you're carrying along as you go along. And you can ask, what's the chance that the next time you have a carry, when you add up these numbers, given the past of the carries? Well, if you think about it, the chance of the future depends on the past only through the present, like in physics. Um, what happened before doesn't matter. If I tell you just this carry, however these went, what goes under these is random, and this carry determines the chances of, of, the, next, um, of, the, next, of the next time. That's what a Markov chain is. It's a random process where the future depends on the past only through the present. And so the carries form a, a Markov chain. And what that means is that this carries question, how do the carries go when you add numbers, is determined by a simple, by a matrix. Um, uh, uh, so let me write it down. Uh, um, uh, Pij, uh, which is uh, what's the chance, the chance that the next carry is, um, is j, given that the last is i. Uh, so there's a, there's a little matrix. Now, I forgot my, this is my no free lunch theorem. Uh, there is no free lunch for the organizers. I'm afraid that I want everybody in this room to get one of these pieces of paper. So you're going to have your hands full. And I'll keep talking while that happens. So OK, but so let me tie. Uh, let me, um, so uh, so the, when, when you add two numbers, um, the, 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 the Markov chain is 
this is a little matrix, one over two B, and here it's B plus one, and B minus one, and B minus one, and B plus one. Um, so, zero, one, zero, one. So the chance that if you just had a carry of, when you had two numbers, you either have a carry of zero or one each time, the chance that you just had a, that next time you have a carry of zero, given that last time you had a carry of one, is b plus one over two b. Um, now, I'd like to say I discovered this because it's a nifty fact, but it's not true. Um, I was visiting in Nice, uh, and I had some awful task to do, grade some papers, evaluate some candidates, something. And, um, and I didn't want to do it so much, and I was using somebody else's office, and so you know, I looked on the shelves, and I said, oh, I wonder what so-and-so worked on. And there on the shelf in front of me were copies of a popular math magazine, the American Mathematical Monthly, and, um, and so I picked up an issue at random, anything not to work, and I started looking. And one of the articles had a funny title. It was called Carries, Combinatorics, and an Amazing Matrix. And I, my hackles went up, and I, you know, an amazing matrix, really? I mean, is there such a thing? You know, are there amazing matrices? Mm -hmm. Uh, sounds like a little oversell. Um, and uh, it was a paper, it's a wonderful paper by a man named John Holt. Um, and um, the, he was telling the story of, of, of this matrix. Uh, now, when you add uh, n numbers, um, the matrix would be n by n. If I add two numbers, either have a carry of zero or one, and you add n numbers, um, the carries, of course, could be zero, but it, it, it takes a little thinking, but the most the carry can be is n minus one, and so the, the, the chance, that the size of the carry is a number between zero and n minus one, and, and you can ask, what's the chance that you have a carry of, of j following a carry of i? And it's not a hard question. I didn't want to write down a, a bad example, so I wrote it down on a piece of paper that I'm giving out to you. If you look, that, there's a horrible formula with plus and minuses, and, and, and that's, the, that's this matrix, okay? Uh, that is, that's the chance that this, now it's not so hard, if there's one thing we know about in probability is how to add up What's the distribution of a sum of independent uniform random variables? We really know how to do that, and that's, that's where that comes from. But the formula doesn't matter, but so we can write this matrix down, and it's horrible. That's what you should notice, okay? Now, so what's so amazing? I mean, what, what and, and let me tell you a little bit more constructively about carries. Uh, so uh, what's so amazing? Well, it's not so hard to guess that if you add two numbers, half the time you have a carry of zero, half the time you have a carry of one as you go along, and that's, that's, that'll come out. But if you add three numbers, it's not so easy to guess what proportion of time do you have a carry, and you know, is it a third, a third, a third? If you add three numbers, the carry can be zero, one, or two. And, um, and the first fact that Holt proved um, was um, what's the stationary distribution of this matrix, which is the answer to when you, if you go on, what proportion of the time do you have a carry of j? So um, pi of j uh, is the stationary distribution, I'll explain. Um, it satisfies pi of, um, pi of i times p i j uh, is pi of j. Uh, so if you like math, uh, this is a left eigenvector with eigenvalue one, and, um, uh, and it has a nice answer. Um, uh, it's equal to, um, uh, it's equal to a and j, uh, anything's equal to a and j, divided by n factorial, <laughs> where a and j uh, is equal to the number of permutations of n things uh, with j descents. I'll explain. 
Um, so if you have a permutation, that's just an arrangement of the numbers one up to n, three, one, two, six, four, five, seven, that's a permutation of, uh, of seven, where does it go down? It went down from three to one, that's good. It went down from four to two, it went down from six to five. So this permutation had three descents, right? If, if, if uh, this is, you know, d equals three. So a permutation has, has some number of descents and the number of permutations of n things which have j descents, those are called Eulerian numbers and the great Euler in the 1780s worked them out and, and told us a lot of things about it. And I don't care who you are, uh, if when you see that fact, you know, what, what's the per, what are permutations doing there? I was talking about adding numbers, right? What, what's SN doing there? And, and uh, so it's a question. Um, we'll come to understand. The second thing he discovered, it's not so much fun to try to verify that from that formula, by the way. Um, a second thing he discovered, I have this matrix, this giant n by n matrix. Um, uh, matrices have what are called eigenvalues, and they, they determine how, how fast powers of the matrix converge to a limit. And the eigenvalues are, well, 1, rows add to 1, 1 over b, 1 over b squared, 1 over b to the n minus 1. So they were nice eigenvalues. It's not in any way clear, these matrices aren't symmetric, it's not in any way clear why they have real eigenvalues. I don't know any conceptual argument, I mean we can prove this theorem, but why the matrix has real eigenvalues and why are they nice, I don't know. I mean, I really don't. And the third fact um, he proved uh, about, this is, this is this carries matrix. Uh, the third fact is the following. You know, this thing is a matrix, right? If, if I wanted to keep track of it, I could call it P sub B. And now this is a thing no sane person would do, but we're mathematicians. Um, <laughs> you could multiply P sub A times P sub B. You know, you could do that. They're two n by n matrices. Uh, and you know, this got A's and B's all over the place. And he said, this is P sub A times P sub B. And now I'm looking at this paper and looking at these results, and you know, they're kind of easy. I can remember them without looking at my notes. And um, my colleague, Jason Fullman, was on the floor below me, and I ran down to him with, with this paper, and I said, Jason, look at this. It's all about shuffling cards. Now, you may think, well, for this guy, everything's about shuffling cards. <laughs> and I want to try to convince you that this adding numbers stuff that I've been telling you about is all about shuffling cards. So in order to make the connection, I have to tell you a little bit about shuffling cards. Okay, so, um, so I'm going to do that. Uh, Before I do that, I, I should at least use our machinery to answer the question, say, about, about three numbers. Uh, from, from this connection, um, if permutations of three things, there are six permutations of three things. And if you work out how many permutations of three things have no descent, uh, 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 one descent and two descents, permutation three can only have most two descents, it's one for one. And if you divide by six, which is what this is telling you to do, um, a sixth of the time when you add three numbers, you have a carry of zero, two thirds of the time you have a carry of one, and a sixth of the time you have a carry of, of, of two. And if anybody can tell me a conceptual reason for that, I'd be happy to here, um, and with, with adding four numbers, it's 1, 11, 11, uh, 4, uh, 1, <laughs> these add to 24. Um, 
Okay, so knowing these theorems does really tell us a lot about, uh, about how the carries go. Okay, now the shuffling, so it's, wait, new talk starting. You know, I've got a little lost, I'm doing a little math, you can't read my writing. There's a new talk starting. Okay, so come back. <laughs> um, uh, so shuffling, So first of all, what do I mean by shuffling? I mean what you mean. You know, you have a deck of cards, you cut it about in half and go like that, and you do it again and do it again a couple of times. That's what I mean by shuffling. So I'm gonna talk for a few minutes about the question of how many times do you have to shuffle a deck of cards to mix it up? And in case you're tired or whatever, the answer's about seven, and you go back to sleep. <laughs> but Okay, I want to make math out of that. Um, and so the first thing I have to do again is to some way or other write it down. So wh what do I mean by what, what is that? Uh, so here's is math. Uh, uh, so um, uh, I have a deck of cards. Here it is. It's one up to n. They start in order, right? And then I cut them into two piles. Uh, and the, the chance that I cut off, so I can cut one, two, three, the chance that I cut off C cards, cut C, is um, what, n choose C over two to the n. Um, it's the discrete version of the bell-shaped curve. So I cut the cards about in half. That's what that says. And, you know, I'm not perfect, but I, I cut the cards about in half. And then, if this is my left hand and this is my right hand, and at any stage I have C cards in my cut and then N minus C cards here, right? I'm dropping the cards one at a time with my thumbs. Start at the beginning, I cut off C. The chance that I drop the next card from left uh, is C over N. Um, so, Let's do it for a second. Suppose I cut them exactly in half. 26, 26. Well, then half the time I drop the first card from my left hand. Now, this only has 25 cards left, so the chance I drop the next card from my left hand is 25 over 51. And then, you know, if I now drop this one, then it goes back to half. And that, this is a, a description of what to do at each stage. So these scribbles completely describe a probability distribution on shuffles. It's called the Gilbert, Shannon, Reeds measure at Gilbert, Claude Shannon, and Jim Reeds, all at Bell Labs. And um, uh, there are various things to say about it. The, probably the most important is that it's a very good description. It's a model, mathematical model, of the way real people shuffle real cards. It's not such a good description of the way I shuffle cards. I shuffle cards almost perfectly, and so do Vegas dealers. Um, but listen, if you shuffle cards perfectly eight times, they come back to where they started. Perfect shuffling is not a good way of mixing cards, right? This is provably the most random way of, of shuffling. And um, um, so that's what I mean by shuffle once. So now I have to write down this. So if like, sigma is an arrangement of cards, for example, uh, if this is an arrangement of seven cards, so I could call this thing sigma, just give it a name. Um, and uh, if Q of sigma is equal to the chance uh, of sigma after one shuffle, after one shuffle, well, Q star Q of sigma, in English, what's the chance the deck of cards is in the given arrangement after two shuffles? As math, it's the sum over this thing. Um, in order to get to sigma after one shuffle, you have to do anything, your first shuffle, and then choose the arrangement that gets you to sigma, the second shuffle. And, um, and similarly, we have, I just write it this way, uh, it's the chance of being at the permutation sigma after k shuffles. So that's mathematical model 
for shuffling, and as I said, we've tried it on ask real people to shuffle cards. It's a good description of the way real people shuffle. There's also the uniform distribution, U of sigma, where everything's perfectly mixed up. It's one over n factorial. And um, people, when they hear that I study shuffling cards, they say, well, can't you do that on a computer? 52 factorial is around 10 to the 68th. It's more than the number of particles in the universe. So if, if, if every particle were a computer, actually, never once in the history of the universe would we be able to run through all arrangements of a deck of 52 cards. It's nice that there are some things you can't do on a computer. You have to think, OK. Um, uh, what we want to, the first theorem in the subject was um, proved by Poincaré, who I think I heard his name mentioned before. Um, uh, and uh, Poincaré proved that uh, in symbols, q star k of sigma goes to u of sigma as k gets large. And all that means is if you shuffle a deck of cards a lot, it gets all mixed up. You already knew that, right? <laughs> and uh, what I want to know is how fast. You know, I'm trying to get random on a huge set, 10 to the 68th possibilities. Do I have to shuffle 10 to the 68th times? So, um, so in order to make a math question out of this, you have to say what it means to get the right answer. What does it mean to say that two probability distributions are close? Let's just write that down um, for a second. Uh, so the distance between shuffling k times and uniform, um, I'll define it this way, and I'll explain my definition. It's the maximum over questions you could ask of the chance, I'll explain this, uh, minus u of a. OK, so let me try to explain this. Um, a is a subset of arrangements of a deck of cards. Maybe A is the set of all permutations where the ace of spades is in the top half. Okay. Q star K of A is what's the chance, if you shuffle a deck of cards K times, that you're in the set of arrangements A. And this is what's the chance on the uniform distribution of A. And if, if this number is small, then that means for any question, whatever game you want to play, um, if you shuffle K times, then, then it's, uh, you're close to random. With all of this specified, I can finally say a well-defined math question. So uh, problem, um, uh, given a challenge number, given some epsilon bigger than 0, maybe 1 in 100, maybe 1 in a million, uh, how large k? So that the distance of shuffling to uniform um, is less than epsilon. So this is a well-posed math question. I've said what Q is. I've said what all the symbols mean. And, um, uh, and it's a math problem now. And, uh, and I want to ask a question at this stage, because I'm about to do a little math. Um, but it's a question you don't hear asked often enough. I'll just say that. And um, so my question is this. <laughs> You know, there are many things in life, uh, uh, and uh, why study this one? After all, everybody knows if you shuffle a deck of cards three, four, five times, it's all mixed up. Well, like so many things that everybody knows, it's just wrong. <laughs> That's all. Uh, and um, it, uh, demonstrate that so that you can take something away from this talk. Um, and uh, do I remember right? Is it Lisa? Janice, that's terrible. It's Janice, OK. But that means we don't know each other well. <laughs> that's terrible. Excuse me, Janice. Um, so I'm going back to California. And Janice is here in Canada someplace. But you know, in a week after I'm home, I send her a letter, Janice. It was great to meet you. Support the CRM. And, uh, and, but I thought you might like to see a card trick. And notice I've enclosed a deck of cards with this letter. And there's a deck of cards with a letter. Okay. Would you take the cards out of the case? Take them out of the case. Give the cards a cut. You cut them. Give them a shuffle. Okay. 
give him another cut, cut, give him another shuffle, shuffle, give him a few more cuts, cut, cut, cut. I'm sure you'll agree no living human could know the name of the top card. It sounds right. You're here, I'm there, nobody's peeking. Okay. Take that card off, look at it, remember it, suppose it's the six of hearts, put it back in the middle of the deck, give the deck another cut, give it another shuffle, give it a few more cuts, cut, 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 mail me back the deck. Oh yes, and at six o'clock every evening, concentrate on your card. <laughs> And then in a week or however long it takes the post to work, um, she gets a note back saying, hey, it was the Six of Hearts, and it was the Six of Hearts. Uh, um, okay, so I want to explain how that trick works because it'll teach you about the physics of shuffling and it'll make the point that three, four, or five shuffles aren't enough. So of course the deck I sent her is arranged. Uh, you know, it, Probably she's a clever person. She might look carefully at what the cards were, so maybe I just mix them all up and then write them down. But I know the order of the cards. But for us, let's suppose that the cards are in order one, two, up to N. Okay. When you shuffle a deck of cards once, why isn't it random? Well, let's think about it. Okay. You cut them off, maybe you cut 20 cards. Okay. And then you shuffle them. Okay. The top portion that you cut off are still in the same order, and the bottom portion are still in the same order, right? So the deck has two rising sequences, right? After one shuffle, no matter how you cut, right? If you, no matter how you shuffle, the deck has two rising sequences. And now I wish I could do this, but I can't, but I'll, you have to do it in your minds. Suppose that I do it again, okay? So here's the top half of the deck. It has two rising sequences. The bottom half of the deck has two rising sequences. When you shuffle them, there are four rising sequences. Yeah, these two and these two, there's four. When you shuffle a third time, uh, there are eight rising sequences. When you take that top card off, six parts, and put it in the middle, it makes a ninth rising sequence of length one. So what do I do when I get the cards from you? What do, how, how do I figure it out? I play solitaire. I turn the top card up, it's the jack of spades. If the next one were the queen of spades, I would play it on the jack, but suppose it's the seven of diamonds. I just start a new pile, seven of diamonds, nine of clubs, oh, there's the queen of spades, I play it on the jack, okay? So what, if you try that, you remember the cards were in order, one up to N, what you'll find is at the end you have eight piles, each about an eighth of the deck and a ninth pile of size one. Okay. So that's my report, and uh, um, so, if you believe that, and I probably wouldn't lie to you if I did uh, Yes, uh, if you believe that, th three shuffles are not enough to mix up 52 cards. Because you can have at most eight rising sequences. Uh, a deck, if it's well shuffled, has you know, 20 to 30 rising sequences. Similarly, four shuffles are not enough to mix up five cards. Five shuffles aren't enough to mix up five, uh, 52 cards. And I don't care how you shuffle. If you shuffle perfectly, if you're looking out the window, if you're using the Gilbert, because after five shuffles, you can have at most 32 rising sequences, and that misses a, a, a sizable proportion of the arrangements of the deck, however you shuffle. Okay, so, um, and that's a trick you can do and try and so forth. It's invented by a Petaluma chicken farmer named Charles Jordan uh, about 1916, uh, but it's a good trick. And um, so in order to push further, I have to, I have to use my model. Everything I've been saying doesn't use the model. So I want to show you what a theorem in shuffling theory looks like. And I'm going to say this theorem two ways. Um, there are many other answers to this question, but this is the only one I'm going to offer. Uh, um, so let me first give you the numbers. So this is a theorem. It's a theorem I proved with Dave Beyer. Uh, a long time ago, and um, here's how it goes. Um, here's the number of times, this is n is 52. I'm first going to tell it to you with numbers, n is 52. Um, uh, k is the number of shuffles, and, and this row is going to be the distance to random after k shuffles. So number of shuffles, one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, that's enough. This distance is the difference between two numbers which are between zero and one, so it's between zero and one. And it's zero if and only if this is completely different from this. Okay? And it's, it's, sorry, it's zero, sorry, it's zero if they're the same, excuse me. <laughs> it's zero if they're the same, it's one if this supports, is supported on one set of permutations and the other is supported on another set of, a complementary set of permutations. So we want to know how large k has to be so that this goes to zero. So here's, here are the numbers, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 1.000, 
a little something about that, right? I mean, how, why, what do I know about shuffling that would make me run to Jason and say, hey, you know, these adding numbers theorems are all about shuffling. So in order to explain that, I have to tell you a tiny little bit, just a tiny little bit more about shuffling. What's the connection? And then I'll surrender. Uh, OK, so I, I'm going to give you a different description of shuffling, a physics description of shuffling. Here's the unit interval. Here's, here are the numbers between 0 and 1. And then drop endpoints down at random. This is Luke's favorite. Uniform. So, and label them left to right, x1, x2, up to xn. So in random points in the unit interval. OK, that, just picture that for a second. We can do that. Independent, identically distributed uniform points. Raindrops drop down. And, uh, and now do the Baker's transformation. Baker. B-A-K-E-R. That, that, what, what that does is it takes x into twice x mod 1. So let me explain. Um, what does that mean? It means you take the left half of the interval, and then you stretch it out. And you take the right half of the interval, a half to 1, and you stretch it out, and you mush the two halves together. I mean, that's, that's what this map does. And if you think about it, well, there are a binomial number of points in the left half and there are binomial n minus that number of points in the right half. And the, the, when the cards interlace, these dots shuffle. And the distribution of permutations index, in, induced by the Baker's map is exactly the Gilbert shannon reeds measure that I talked about before. So um, it's not hard to show, and it's true. So, um, now, that being said, it's not unnatural to ask about, what about a three shuffle? Or an A shuffle? Or a B shuffle? So for example, when B is three, uh, that would be x goes into three x mod one. So what is that as shuffles? Well, as dots, it's the following. You drop n points down. You take the left third, you stretch it out. You take the middle third, you stretch it out. You take the right third, stretch it out. With cards, it's the following. You have a deck of cards. You divide it into three piles by a trinomial distribution. Just cut it into three piles. And then with your three hands, you start. <laughs> I knew you were leaving. Uh, with your three hands, you st start dropping the cards with probability proportional to packet size. And um, uh, so you could do that with, with any number of piles. And, and if I did it with B piles, uh, I would call it a B shuffle. And, um, uh, and so that's just another way of talking about this Gilbert Shannon Reed's measure. And what we knew about it was in the work on shuffling, years before I thought about adding numbers, um, we knew that um, uh, the, the eigenvalues of shuffling, of B shuffling, it's a Markov chain 2, or 1, 1 over B, 1 over B squared, 1 over b to the n minus 1. The multiplicities are different, but the numbers are the same. So the eigenvalues of adding are the same as the eigenvalues of shuffling. Okay. Uh, I knew this. Uh, q sub a can involve with q sub b. First do a b shuffle and do an a shuffle. That's the same as q sub a b. Why? Well, look, x goes into a times x. And then take that into b times x. That's the same as x goes into a times b mod x, mod 1. a times b to x mod 1. So this was obvious. It's extremely useful because that says, see, I want to I want to study this. Well, that's the same as q as q times 2 to the k. So in order to understand shuffling, you only have to know about b shuffles. That's the way it went. And then in our analysis, there were Eulerian numbers all over the place. Uh, and so it, it had to be that this 
subject was the same as adding numbers. It just had to be. Now, I don't know, we all have had that moment of, you know, this thing is like this, I can't see why, but I mean, I know there has to be a connection. I mean, any mathematician, any physicist, any, anybody uh, will see there's some connection between these two things. Here there was a very many loud signals pointing in that direction. I'll just tell you the, um, the connection uh, to not uh, make a big mystery out of it. Uh, it, did take, it did take a while until we, we saw through it, but um, I'll just tell you the connection. So I'm going to write it down more or less in words. Um, we have two processes. Um, so let um, kappa naught, which is 0, kappa 1, kappa 2, etc be the carries um, when n numbers are added mod b. OK, so you know, I, 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 I can answer, so I start at 0, what's the chance that kappa 1 is some number, kappa 2 is some other number, you know, kappa l is some elf number, you know, these go on forever, and I can compute these chances. Um, uh, let d0, which is 0, d1, d2 be the number of descents um, when uh, n cards are repeatedly be shuffled. So let me explain as best I can. So when a deck starts in order, it's in order one up to n, there are no descents. It keeps going up. Now you shuffle once. Well, it's a mess. Maybe there's some number of descents. That's called d1. And then you shuffle again. There's some other number of descents, d2. And that's a random process. It bops around. Uh, and the, the claim is that uh, the, the theorem we proved is that this is equal to the probability that d1 is a1. They're exactly the same process, d, uh, l is AL. For every N, for every B, for every L, for every A1 up to AL, they're the same process. Um, and now there's a question that this room is a wonderful room, but it doesn't have an audience protector in it. The audience protector is a clock. So that, now, you know, we did start pretty late, Luke. Um, and what, I, can, can I have another three minutes? Is that allowable? Okay, three minutes. I want to explain, at least give you the tiniest insight and why should this be true? Uh, and, uh, and then I, I will stop. Uh, um, so I know I probably embarrassed everybody by starting out, you know, adding numbers. Really, this is going to be a math talk? How low can you go? <laughs> Just wait. I'm going to now talk about adding a single column of numbers. OK, let's try it. 6, 8, 4, 2, 9, 5, 3, 3, 5. OK. Uh, and this is 8, 11, 16, 25, uh, 27, 31, 39, 45, maybe. <laughs> maybe it's 45. OK, we'll check. I'm going to do it again slower from the top down, and you have to now keep everything honest, OK? Uh, here's a 6. I, I write down 6. 8 and 6 are 14, so I write down the 4. And then I put a dot here to just show I had a carry. 4 and 4 are 8. That's good. 2 and 8 are 0. And then there's a carry. 9 and 8, 9 and 0 are, are, zero, are 9. That's good. Uh, 5 and 9 are 14. And there's a carry. Um, 3 and 4 are 7. The hard thing, 3 and 7 are 0. And then and there's a carry. Uh, that's important. Um, uh, let's see, where is the carry? The carry's here. And 5 and 0 are, are 5. And so I have 4 carries and 5 and, and 
45. Okay, I did it correctly the first time. Um, now, these dots are a familiar bookkeeping apparatus. Accountants still use them if you have to add a long column of numbers. And it's sold under the name of the Trachtenberg System of Speed Arithmetic. You can look it up. And uh, now, by now, you know there's a natural question. When you add numbers, how do the dots go? You know, how many times do you have a carry? And if you just had a carry, are you more or less likely to have a carry the next time? Just to show you that that question has some legs, let me point this out. If these digits are chosen independently and uniformly between 0 and B, between 0 and 9 here, I claim these digits are independent and uniform. Why? Well, here's 6. Of course, that's random because I just wrote a random number down and I copied it. Now, if you add a random number to 6 mod 10, here's 6. If you add a random number, it's random no matter where you started, right? So, so and independent of where you started, and that keeps going. So these numbers are independent and identically distributed, and there's a carry here if and only if there's a descent. Here I went from 6 to 4, 8 to 0, 9 to 4, 7 to 0. That's easy to see. I mean, just some elementary fact, really elementary fact about numbers. So the distribution of carries is the same as the distribution of descents, at least in this simple case. This argument can be amplified. It's not exactly for children, but uh, to show that the, uh, the distribution of carries, if you add lots of numbers, is something about permutations. And there's one of these kinds of dots proofs of this theorem. It wasn't the first or the second proof we found of this. Um, there's, a, there's a quite hard proof of it. Uh, um, before, as part of this story, I gave out a handout. And I want to just spend one second getting you to look at the handout in case you ever want to know more about this. And I don't. Uh, that I can't do without my glasses, and then I will surrender. Um, so um, the a reference to Holt's paper um, is, uh, is, uh, is, is, is our first reference. And, and it's a wonderful paper, because he doesn't just show you the math. He tries to show you how he thought of it by showing you his failures and how he went along the way. Um, if you're interested in things like that, you can ask, what are carries as part of math? You know, what are carries anyway? I mean, every kid learns about them. What are carries? Carries are co-cycles, and that's a beautiful part of modern algebra. And you can do everything that I have been doing here, everything, with any group and any subgroup and, and just keeping track of, 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 of how, how, how often you get a carry in the sense of co-cycles. Um, the paper I wrote about shuffling with Dave Beyer is listed next. If you want to see this talk written out, well, it's going to be in the movies, apparently. But uh, um, the, 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 the friendly version of the talk is, is written next. Um, this subject this is a semi-public talk. It's a math talk, of course. But this subject developed, and you can do this not only for type A, um, but for any reflection group, and, um, and that sounds like math for math's sake, and when we did it, it was math for math's sake, but then I got a call to do consulting for the casinos on analyzing new shuffling machines, and they were exactly the, the using type B shuffles. That, that's what their fancy machine was doing, and, and uh, so that, that, that's all written down. And, and carries, carries goes all, all over the place. And uh, um, so what I began this talk by saying was I was going to try to tell you that you could find math any place. And I did really find it in two of the most you know, humdrum day-to-day -day things, shuffling cards and, uh, and adding numbers, you really can find math any place. Of course, the real reason for who cares is sometimes the math is beautiful. I hope I convinced you of that. Thank you. Thank you.